Hi, this is John from Soundcraft, and welcome to the UI series tutorials. In this instalment, I'm going to cover Wi-Fi and Ethernet settings on the UI series. Firstly, I'd like to show you how easy it is to connect a device to a UI series mixer out of the box, and then set up some of the additional network properties to better suit your needs. For this example, we'll be using a Soundcraft UI 16, a MacBook Pro, and an up-to-date browser, such as Chrome. Make sure that your mixer is powered on and that the blue Wi-Fi LED on the front panel has stopped flashing. This usually takes around 15 seconds, indicating that the UI's onboard router is now ready for connections. Go to the Mac's Wi-Fi menu and look for the Soundcraft UI mixer. There it is there. Once connected, all you need to do is go to your browser, open a new tab and enter UI dash mixer dot io. Click enter. The mixer presents the device selection page. This page allows you to select the most appropriate control app for your device's display size. In this case my Mac has a large display, so I'm going to select the large device icon. If I had a phone or a device with a small display, I could select the small device icon. I'll go ahead and select the large icon. Once the app is loaded, you will have complete control of the UI16 in your browser, full control of the mixer. Now that you have connected successfully, it will be important for you to configure the network properties to better suit your needs. You will most likely want to add some password security to the UI's hotspot, enable the Ethernet interface, or possibly join your UI mixer to an external Wi-Fi network. All these configurations are possible and can be done in the Settings Network tab. Go to the Settings icon in the top navigation panel. Make sure you've selected the Network tab. The Network tab page shows the status of the three interface connection types, Hotspot, Wi-Fi and LAN. It also shows the status and addresses associated with those connections. Note that these interfaces can be used simultaneously. To change any of the settings, click on the config button. You will have to provide authentication to proceed. The defaults are admin and admin. At this point, it's important to note that after you've edited and saved any network settings, you need to power cycle the mixer for the changes to take effect. This means turning your mixer off for around 10 seconds and then turning it back on. Once you power cycle your mixer, your device will need to rejoin the Soundcraft UI16's network again. Let's take a look at the network configuration pages. They are very similar to the settings you would find on a normal router, just like one you may have at home. There are five pages in the network configuration, one for hotspot configuration, Wi-Fi configuration, LAN configuration, administrator password setup, and an overview page for the network state. Let's configure the UI's hotspot. In the hotspot, you can edit or disable the interface altogether, set up the mixer's SSID or the network name, Set the regulatory domain of the location that you reside in and set up the channel that you want the Wi-Fi hotspot to operate on. Keep in mind that there are some very good third-party applications for all operating systems that can scan the Wi-Fi environment and recommend the least congested channel for your current location. A good channel choice can help reduce interference and improve your Wi-Fi signal. Lastly, you can set up security and a password. If that's the only interface connection type that you need, you can go ahead and click Save and Update. And as mentioned before, you'll need to power cycle your mixer for the settings to take effect. For this demonstration, we'll move on and check the configuration options for the other types. Wi-Fi configuration. This page allows you to join the mixer to an existing Wi-Fi network. It's a great option if you have a network already set up. Your existing network may be useful in many ways. It may have a greater Wi-Fi range, a more powerful antenna, or Wi-Fi extenders. You may uh, need to control other devices in your network, 
or simply need internet connectivity. Here you can enable or disable the interface. Set the SSID or the network name that you wish your mixer to join. Enter the password field. And set the address type to manual or DHCP. This option allows you to have the mixer's IP address set automatically by the router controlling the network you are joining or configure the IP address manually yourself. Go ahead and click Save and Update. Once again, if that's all you need to do, you can go ahead and power cycle your mixer for the settings to take effect. The LAN configuration page allows you to configure the LAN connection. The LAN connection is great for when you want to use a fixed Ethernet cable to the side of the unit. It's the most robust connection type you can have and great for installations where Wi-Fi signal quality cannot be guaranteed, especially over wider distances. Here you can enable or disable the interface and set up the address as DHCP or manual. Go ahead, click Save and Update. Power cycle your mixer for the settings to take effect. The next network option is to configure an administrator password for accessing the network configuration pages. Here you can change the admin password to prevent unauthorised access to the UI's network settings. After you've completed that, click Save and Update and Power Cycle your mixer for the changes to take effect. The last network configuration page simply displays a network state of all active interfaces. It's a great page to go to to get an overall view of the network setup. Once all configured, you can go ahead and power cycle your mixer for all the settings to take effect. One important point to note is that if you configure the Wi-Fi or LAN connections to receive their IP addresses via DHCP, you need to know and remember what IP addresses your mixer was issued in order to connect from your browser via that connection type. One of the easiest ways to do this is to log into the mixer by joining the internal hotspot and then going to the settings network page. Let's do that now. I'm going to return from the configuration pages, rejoin the mixer, go to the settings on the top navigation panel, select the network tab, and here we can see the status of the hotspot, the Wi-Fi and the LAN and the addresses that may have been issued or set manually. Now that we know the address to connect to, if we join the mixer via our Wi-Fi joined network, then we know we can access the mixer via this IP address. Let's try that. I'm going to change my Wi-Fi connection from directly to the mixer to my external Wi-Fi router that we've joined, which was called SoundM. Once it's joined SoundM, you'll see that this mixer drops offline and tries to connect because we've changed our connection style and type. I'm going to access a new tab and put in the IP that I know the mixer resides on. Select Enter. And there we have it, we've joined the network over a third party Wi-Fi network and we can click the device tab icon and we've got direct control over our mixer in the browser once again on this IP address 192.168.1.78. That's it for the UI series network configuration, I'm John with Soundcraft and thanks for watching.